Hey guys, welcome to another Razer tutorial and this week I want to talk about um, connecting external LFOs to a Razer and to demonstrate that I've made sort of a bass sound it sounds like this and if I use aftertouch on my keyboard uh, I can control some uh, more effects like the um, uh, the P grid here So first um, let's go over the sound and then I'll explain the external LFO thing. Um, what I did first is set the uh, pitch down minus 36, so that's 3 octaves. I'm going to disable the pitch bend here. And then I've used the sync noise oscillator in this first slot. And the sync noise is a module that on the left side you have this dynamic knob. And on the left side every time you press a key it's going to... Um, it's gonna give a sound with the same um, the same start of a, a randomization in the in the partials. So every time it sounds the same, and all the way to the right, it's gonna randomize this, so the attack will sound differently. You can hear the phasing. And now it's always the same. And then you have the seed which sets the um, which sets the randomness, the start of the random random noise that is triggering the module. So I've used that one and it gives a very bright and um, I think it's it's a nice sound. You have to pitch it down a little bit, but then you get um, you can get some really cool bass sounds with just that oscillator. Um, then I've used the pulse to saw, which is a pulse and a saw wave, and it's somewhere in the middle. And I modulated that with LFO1. And LFO1 is set to sine, it's uh, synced to my tempo, and the beat is set to 4. Sorry, the speed is set to 4. Um, that's all for that oscillator. Oh, and the first one I modulated with LFO2, which is also set to uh, sine, and I'm gonna set that to a different speed, let's say 2. And that all is going to the EQDK, and the EQDK, we've talked about that uh, a little bit already, but here you have these sliders and you select the band um, that you want to alter, and you can decide if the band goes up after the decay stage or down. So everything, you have this middle point here, and everything that's um, above that point will rise um, with, the, with the time that you set here with the decay and everything that you set below that point will uh, fall so it will lower those harmonics you can see that so now this band is going down and i can make it go up as well Make that faster or slower with the decay. And then with the pitch offset, you set the uh, sort of center point of where this is working. So if I um, drag this more to the right, it's going to be more high, more higher in general, or lower. And that is going to the comb peak filter, um, which is a comb of a, a feedbacking filter. And I've set a little bit of ten attack and decay attenuation here. Uh, smoothness is what it is called in the um, in the manual, and this causes the modulation here to be a little bit more uh, well smooth. And you can, you can hear that I think when I drag this amount up. So now when I drag this down, this attack, the attack is going to be sharper. When I drag it up, it's going to be a little bit more smooth. And the same is for the decay. And I modulated this one with LFO2 and LFO1, um, both on the cutoff and the boost. And the phase, I could modulate that with LFO2 if I wanted to. And 
and then I use the P grid effect um, and this one uh, sets the partials to a fixed grid and I modulate the amount up with aftertouch and the pitch down uh, with aftertouch so then when you press the key harder you get an interesting effect where it will um, well you, you can see it as well it makes these gaps in, in, the, um, in the frequency range can be a little bit more subtle with the amount. So the amount is how uh, broad, I don't know if that's a word, but how um, how wide the band will be. And the pitch sets uh, where that band will be. And then I use the chorus effect. Makes it nice and stereo. And I've used the limiter. And that uh, makes it nice and gritty with a little bit of dirt here. I don't want to overdo this effect though because it's gonna um, it's gonna make the sound less focused and, and clean. And that's a shame when you have a nice and clean additive synthesizer. Um, so that's for this part. Um, in terms of envelopes, I used envelope 2. Um, it's listening to the echo, uh, decay is at 38, and the echo feedback amount is at point, about 0.4. You can see it fading away if you look at the dynamic knob right here. could use it on the um, maybe on the decay as well envelope 2 but then for the fun part I was um, running out of oscillators or sorry LFOs because I want to uh, modulate the pitch offset as well with a different LFO and I already used these and I wanted to have a different rhythm so since we only have two LFOs here, I had to use an external LFO. And to do that, you um, first click this uh, button right here. I don't know what it's called. It says Stoggle Edit Mode. All right. You go into Edit Mode. And then you can go to your uh, panel right here. I, I click on Razor Ensemble. And then when you right click here, you can choose all different modules that you want to combine with Razor. And I went for Automation and then Automation LFO. And when you do that and you go back to the normal panel, you get this um, this LFO right here. And you could also choose a sequencer or filters or whatever you want. Um, and then when I click to send to, I get, uh, you see that little sort of drop down menu and you get the option Razor. And then you get a huge list of stuff that you want to modulate. And I went for a filter and then um, offset this one and th this is always a bit difficult inside reactor because there's just so many options you can do a lot more than just control um, the knobs that you can automate in Razor for example you cannot automate these uh, bands with inside Razor they don't have this modulation amount but with the with this LFO you can so that's why it's giving you uh, a lot of options um, but anyway, I went for filters and then filter one. And now I lost it again. There it is, pitch offset. And now this doesn't work when I um, play my keyboard because it's listening to the uh, MIDI sync. So you have to actually play the project to hear this. Um, and now you can see it moving and uh, Razor will actually give you these numbers here that normally are happening when you um, drag a knob like this because it really thinks that you are that you are dragging that knob so th so that is one difference um, then what is important inside this, this LFO is of course you choose your uh, tempo and you choose your wave and all that stuff but you also set the amount because this LFO doesn't know what the amount of the knob is, it doesn't know how far it can go. So it's just providing you with a, a huge amount of um, 
well, modulation basically. So with these lower and upper sliders, you set the um, lower level of the modulation, so how far it can go down, and the upper level, so how far it can go up. So you have to tweak this a little bit to, to get it right. So now I'm just using this very small range uh, right here, but I can make it a little bit higher if I do this. And I can make the, the range wider by dragging these out further. So this is how you use an uh, external LFO or any external stuff with the razor and although if you want to use the filters or, uh, or stuff like that more like output effects because this is modulation but if you wanna um, if you wanna choose something on the signal pad so the, really the audio you have to do it a little bit differently and you have to um, connect it to the to connect it to the output um, so you can just drag it in and then use the send to box because not all modules have that send to um, but I'm gonna go over that in uh, in another video. For now, I think this is a cool trick. You can really you can, for example, uh, open a sequencer and make uh, make your own arpeggiator to use with Razer, and that stuff is really cool and it, it it inspires new ideas. So I always like to do that. Thanks, and uh, see you next week.